All right, good morning, Grats and Gets. It is the last day of the World Championships, and I'm pretty, pretty pumped to be here with you today. I'm going to bring it to you. Let's see how all we're prepping for the last day. We still don't know our pairings for the day, so uh, we do do the mission. Round 7 is going to be Take and Hold, and it's going to be Raise Banners. And then we have Round 8, which will be Lynchpin, and also Raise Banners. Um, round 7 with Take and Hold, we're going to be on Tipping Point, and then Round 8 will be on search and destroy so let's figure out how we're going to deploy for the last day um, obviously as with all the other rounds there's going to be some variance depending on which army we play but i'll just give you my thoughts behind it as you can hear my voice is starting to get a little a little worn down here it's been a blast and a half and i uh man it's been an awesome experience all right so we have tipping point and take and hold so the issues with this particular map is there's basically nothing that we can safely hold. If you want to hold a objective here for take and hold, you get screwed. If you come in the middle, you get screwed. If you want to hold right here, you get screwed. So there's one tiny little pocket that you can kind of stand on. So I'll give you an example. You can kind of stand right here and be relatively safe. There's really no line to get shot with right here. Um, maybe if I have a smaller model, yeah, I'll show that. Yeah, so like there's one tiny little spot right here that your opponent can't see from their deployment zone. So there's going to be one place on the map where you can almost safely from shooting hide it. But in all reality, it's not really safe because all they're going to need to do is just come out ever so slightly. And the second they do, uh, they just got to come over to here or something. So no safe places to hold, which is, I think, fairly favorable to me because they get a bunch of tougher vehicles but not necessarily great. So, you gotta hold your home field, boom, infiltrator. Super, super easy. There's one amazing melee staging part, point on this entire map, and it is right here. You can stage right here and effectively get to the entire map. So I know for a fact that this is where I want to send Dante's squad, because from here, I can pretty much go anywhere I want. Later on, I can get a 12, a minimum 14 with advance, a, a maximum of a 19 with advance. So I can pivot to his home field. I can pivot to the bottom. This allows me to get anywhere, which means I'm probably going to deploy Dante somewhere like here. Because from here, I could also just turn one, get all the way up here, right? So this is probably the place to deploy him. You could also put him right here. So just for purposes of this video, I'm going to put him right here for right now. That could change on... The table depending if i want to where i want to stage right all right um where did the tanks go we got to look at the firing lanes that you got to look at so you definitely got to cover this lane here this is a firing lane into your opponent's deployment zone you need something that can target your opponent so what i'm going to do is i am going to do that with i think a ballista dreadnought so when my ballista is standing right here i can easily move up to here so i can start completely safe and then I can move up to shoot. I don't particularly really care if I get shot back after I do my shooting with the ballistas. Because he's got that sweet two up armor save and he's going to be in cover. It's uh, it's really annoying for your opponents after you actually have to shoot him back. If I stack him with the Lancer in the same area, I can follow him up with the Lancer. To also, yeah, let's say we do it like this. And you can follow him up with the Lancer to also provide fire support in that angle. So that you can get two really good firing bombs right on the angle. The Lancer could also pivot to be here to shoot off of this angle or shoot down this angle. It's a lot of coverage for one Lancer. Where would the other Lancer go? In all reality, the other Lancer is either here so that they can so it can walk out here, or it's going to be moving here so that it can walk to be here. Coming here, and then once again covering this lane. Um if I put, obviously put this one behind this guy, then this dude can hang up here. So just for deployment's sake, let's start with one Lancer right about here, and we'll start with the other Lancer right about here. Um, yeah, so they're both safe there. Okay, then I'm going to actually probably need one Predator in reserve with the Sanguinar in this game. I'm going to have one Ball Predator, because they're super, super fast, and you have to get to objectives. I'm going to start one Ball Predator right here. I'm going to start one Ball Predator right here i need to make sure that no matter what he can't shoot my ball predator turn one um so basically there's nothing that's going to be able to get to here most shooting platforms are going to be about a 10 inch move so that would be the best they could get 
So I would just hide him there. And now with my big awesome movement on the ball predator, I could very easily get him here. If I get a decent advance, I can get him here. Um, lots of things I can do with him. That looks like a good ball predator. And so in this matchup, I'm going to take the ball predators and I'm going to be using them as my melee bullies. Because the firing lanes are going to be so restricted off of all your staging points, I'm actually going to be using the ball predators like a pseudo melee unit where I can actually push him up onto the objective, use his flavors as his melee attacks. And I can basically just have a really tough 135 point pseudo melee unit. Um, he's also there for a great overwatch potential and things. So I'm going to be using the ball predators as my bullies. I have one normal predator right here. Um, let's go. This is actually a little bit of an interesting decision. I think we definitely put one Mephiston right here because he's gonna run up. He's gonna have to run up onto the objective for me. Uh, Kalidus will have to be down here to be able to score me some containment early on. Scouts. This is probably the perfect place to put my scouts. If you just suck them right in the corner. One thing that I always like to do with my scouts, guys, is I like to use my scouts for multi-purposes. So, when I put my scouts here, let me just make sure this is legal. I'm going to have to scoot them back for about two extra inches. So, if I start my scouts like this and I go first, if he has, like, transports, if he has anything right here, I can easily scout maybe this direction and then i can move six inches forward in the first turn and i can move block more or less his entire vehicle army turn one another thing that having my scouts right here will do is it will kind of block any of his scouts from deploying in this area so actually what i'll do is i'll put one guy here and i'll put one guy here so what this does now if i just put up the bubble so you can see now he can't deploy his scouts here he can't do anything like that so there's no way he would move block me turn one but I will be able to move lockdowns on So this will probably be my first drop if I get if I get to if I get to go first. It gives me a lot of utility. If I go second, I hop behind a wall, I can't get shot. And then later on, what they'll do is they'll provide a little melee screen for my sanguinary guard who are gonna stage here. So let me show you what that's gonna look like. So when I get my sanguinary guard here after my turn one movement, if I'm playing in a melee pressure army match, a melee match, I'll deploy my scouts basically like this. So that if he wants to charge into my sanguinary guard, he's actually going to have to charge my scouts first, which is going to be really annoying for him. So this gives me a lot of a lot of uh, utility having my scouts here. One, I can deny his scouts. Two, I can go move blocks in the entire army. Three, I can get locusts. I can get um, area of denial. I can get secure no man's land with two with one unit on two objectives. And then four, I can also even screen my sanguinary guard from melee. So this is generally going to be the way I want to deploy in this particular matchup. Uh, JPI probably come here or something like that more or less this is why i want to do it i get to cover this firing lane i get to cover this firing lane i get to cover this i get to cover this lane i get to cover get my uh, ball predators in positions this is just generally speaking going to be a great way to deploy all right hope that was useful for you i'm just going to very quickly uh move on to the, the last train set which is going to be actually I, um, it's going to be the same terrain it's just going to be on uh, search and destroy. So let's just check that real fast, and then I'm going to let you go. My voice is getting tired, y'all. Here we go. Search and destroy. All right. Once again, this is a relatively easy way to place to deploy. On this particular map, I think I definitely keep Dante down here. They're going to do the more or less the exact same thing. I'm going to stage right here. And then I'm going to go. Or, actually, on this map, depending on where his shooting options are, I might actually stage here. And then go. Because if he doesn't really move out aggressively turn one, then this is a, actually not a bad place to stage either. One Gladiator Lancer. And then I think I'll go... Two lancers right there, so now I'll be able, I'll move. I can move out turn one, and I can blast this lane for him, and I can blast it with this guy as well. Scouts on this map, since it's going to be a take and hold, I'm probably going to have my scouts up here. Infiltrators, of course, holding the backfield, which is what they do. Infiltrators have been told chads the entire tournament, guys. 
Take infiltrators. You're just getting greedy if you don't. One lovely little Calidus. I think I'm going to have the Calidus up here with the scouts. Because what this does is it puts me in a position to get containment with two models just right up here. Now let me put up the containment so I can show you what I'm showing about, what I'm talking about. So right here, I'll be able to like get containment with the scouts off of this edge. And then the Calidus can get me containment off of this edge. And she's very safe here on turn one. Uh, Mephiston. Not sure what the best place for Mephiston is, to be honest with you. I think, honestly, I'm going to hold him roughly right here. He doesn't really need to be here, but I'm going to probably run him up this direction. Because this is my opponent's objective. I'm, it's not like I'm ever really going to be able to assault this objective, so I'm not really going to try to assault that objective. Um, I think I need some... I'm going to have one of my ball predators in reserve on this map. There's not necessarily enough place to deploy since it's search and destroy. Take one predator. Let's do this. I think I'm going to have a predator here. And then I'll have the lancer behind him. I'm going to have one ball, ball or ballistas here. Yes, there's no way. Uh, yeah, so let's put the ballistas here. And I'm going to put the ball predator right behind them. So this way, there's still actually no good firing line to get into the ballistas because he would have to cross over the, uh, the terrain right here. And that makes me very, very happy. We can even back him up just to do that. So this is probably what the deployment looks here. Basically what uh, this thing allows me to do is my sanguinary guard stage. They stage. My um, lancer gets to move up. Uh, oh, I have JPI as well. Actually, I think I like this better. Yeah, this is better. Lancer needs to be here. Because now the ball predator can go grab me area of the map. Or I can do it with my JPI. Yeah, alright. So here we go, guys. Containment, containment. Secure no man's land. Secure no man's land. Um, Locus. Uh, engage, engage. I probably would not take engage on this front anyway, so I don't really care about it. Unless maybe I would have, maybe I have Mephiston here. That's an option. Um, just to sit here and be a very frustrating thing. Yep, this is it, man. It gets me all my secondaries. It gets me in a strong position. My opponent's never really going to be able to take this because I get to reinforce it with JPI very quickly. Ballistus is ready to rock and roll. I've got two tanks that get to come in here basically for free. And that's it, guys. That's how I'm going to deploy. So, this is the last deployment video. Uh, the next video, is pr I'm probably not going to do a video tonight. I'm probably just going to wait for the full tournament recap where my voice is back and I can actually do it a little bit of justice. I really, really appreciate all of you guys hanging out for the duration of this journey where we've been going through the World Championships of Warhammer. It's been a total blast. And I hope you guys have been getting value out of these, out of these morning videos. The, uh, basically, all I got to say. All right, guys. Have a wonderful freaking day. And I'm going to go finish strong. Cheers.